cannot see you. I cannot see you. I can't hear you. But I believe that you are able to hear me, and you are able to see me. Today is a wonderful day, and as you are connected online, God is connected with you. And my prayer is you visit each and every one of us in the name of Jesus. Uh, connecting online shall not be in vain in Jesus' name. As old as you are, as old as you are, you will never change. Ancient of days, as old as you are, as old as you are, you of days as old as you are as old as you are you will never change ancient days as old as you are as old God Almighty, the creator of the heaven and the earth, the mighty God, you are great, you are good, you are wonderful, you are excellent, you are marvelous. We worship you, Lord. We exalt your name. We magnify you. We glorify you. Father, there is none like you. You alone is great. You alone is mighty. You alone is excellent. You alone is the righteous one. We bless you. There is none like you. No one is as good as you are. No one is as kind as you are. No one is as marvelous as you are. No one is as caring as you are. Father, receive our worship this morning. Receive our praise this morning. We thank you. The ancient of days. The one who does not sleep nor slumber. We thank you. The one that fights our battles. The one that gives us victory. The one that loved us so much that you gave your only begotten son, our Lord Jesus Christ, to come and die for us. Father, we say thank you. We bless your name. We exalt your name. We worship you. We adore you. We adore you. We adore you. What a privilege to call you our Father. What a privilege, Lord. Father, we just want to say thank you. We want to worship you this moment. We want to exalt you, O oh Lord. And glorify you, Lord. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus, as you say, you have not called the seed of Jacob to seek you in vain. Father, as many as we are, O oh Lord, this morning, connected unto this service, Father, I pray that you visit us. Visit each and every one of us, O oh Lord. Father, stretch out your hand, O oh Lord. I pray that your mercy will speak. I ask, O oh Lord, that you touch souls today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you save souls today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you answer questions today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you bring solutions today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will make a way today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you heal somebody today. I pray, O oh Lord, that you visit somebody today. In the name of Jesus, in the comfort of their home, Father, I pray that you visit them. In this place, O oh Lord, that have come for service, Father, visit us, O oh Lord. We bless you. We honor you. We exalt you. Thank you, Heavenly Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, glory be unto your holy name. Glory be unto your holy name. In Jesus' name, we are free. In Jesus' name, we are free. So we are going to take a hymn before I start. And this hymn is take it as a prayer. Is, is very powerful, is very loaded. And um, 
So I'll ask the media to have it uh, on the screen. Ancient words. Uh, the first time I listened to it was here. I heard it was here, and I think it's Pastor Bodo that uh, sang it first. Just impacted me so much. And this morning, even the comfort of your home, uh, I want to invite you to rise up as we take this hymn. Take it prayerfully, and the word of God will impact you. The word of God will transform you. It is his word that he said, let there be light, and there was light. His word today will touch you. His word today will have an impact, will transform, will bring to existence that was not, was not existing before. That which is not working will begin to work by his word in the name of Jesus. Are we ready? Media, are we ready? Awesome. Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words depart. Holy words of our faith and the to us through sacrifice oh he's the faithful words of Christ holy words long preserved for our walk in this world they resound with God's own heart oh let the Ancient words in power, ancient words ever true, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts, oh, let the ancient words in power, ancient words. True, changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words depart. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient Changing me and changing you. We have come with open hearts. Oh, let the ancient words depart. Father, we thank you. We bless your name. Our cry, O oh Lord, let your word impact. Let your word have his entrance in us all. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus 
Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. We may have our seat. Thank you. God bless you. Wonderful to be in the house of the Lord. And uh, don't worry, this measure will not be for long. And uh, the Lord is fighting and on our behalf. And this will not impact us in any way in the name of Jesus. Amen. We will not diminish in the name of Jesus. The fire of God will not go down. The grace of God will not reduce in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. So, um, we are still talking on the topic, uh, on the subject of victory. And today, we're just going to look at a portion of scripture. And I think I will not be able to go through all of it. But I would like us to read, it's a long read, uh, the, the entire passage for the story. And from that story, I'll, print, I'll, I'll pull out one or two things just to share with us today. And I will need someone to help me read NKJV, if, uh, if it's possible. Joshua 6, verse 1 to 21. That's where we are taking our story from. Uh, you don't have NKJV. Now Jericho was securely shut off because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. And the Lord said to Joshua, See, I have given Jericho into your hand, its king and mighty men of valor. You shall march around the city, all you men of war. You shall go all around the city once. This you shall do six days. And seven priests shall bear seven trumpets of arms, of ram's horns before the ark. But the seventh day you shall march around the city seven times, and the priests shall blow the trumpets. It shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, and when you hear the sound of the trumpet, that all the people shall shout with a great shout. Then the wall of the city will fall down flat, and the people shall go up every man straight before him. Then Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said to them, Take up the ark of the covenant, and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. And he said to the people, Proceed and march around the city, and let him who is armed advance before the ark of the Lord. So it was when Joshua had spoken to the people that the seven priests bearing the seven trumpets of ram's horns before the Lord advanced and blew the trumpets, and the ark of the covenant of the Lord followed them. The armed men went before the priests who blew the trumpets, and the rear guard came after the ark, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. Computer doesn't seem to want to work. Now Joshua had commanded the people, saying, You shall shout or make any noise with your voice, nor shall a word proceed out of your mouth until the day I say to you, Shout, then you shall shout. So he had the ark of the Lord circle the city, going around it once. Then they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. And Joshua rose early in the morning, and the priests took up the ark of the Lord. Then seven priests, bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord, went on continually and blew with the trumpets. And the armed men went before them, but the rear guard came after the ark of the Lord, while the priests continued blowing the trumpets. And the second day they marched around the city once and returned to the camp, so they did six days. But it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early about the dawning of the day and marched around the city seven times in the same manner. On that day only they marched around the city seven times. And the seventh time it happened when the priests blew the trumpets that Joshua said to the people, Shout, 
for the Lord has given you the city. Now the city shall be doomed by the Lord to destruction, and it and all who are in it, only Rahab the harlot shall live. She and all who are with her in the house, because she hid the messengers that we sent. And you, by all means, abstain from the accursed things, lest you become accursed. When you take of the accursed things and make the camp of Israel a curse and trouble it. But all the silver and gold and vessels of bronze and iron are concentrated to the Lord. They shall come into the treasury of the Lord. So the people shouted when the priest blew the trumpet. And it happened when the people heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall fell down flat. Then the people went up into the city, every man straight before him, and they took the city. And they utterly destroyed all that was in the city, both man and woman, young and old, ox and sheep and donkey, with the edge of the sword. May God bless the reading of his word. Thank you very much, Sister Favor. God bless you. So this is a story of the children of Israel having victory. They uh, conquered Jericho. Now, what is interesting about this story, we say this is our year of victory, and the Lord has already settled the case, but as we've read in this story, there are some steps the children of Israel are to take in order for them to possess their possession. And those are some of the things we'll look into. Not bec because God has spoken, God has said it, that you need to do something. One of the word of knowledge that came from a general overseer is that every 80% of projects that will be undertaken this year will be successful. If you do not un you do not take any project, you will not encounter any success. Praise the Lord. If you don't, you will not encounter any success in any project. So there are things you need to do. You need to act. It's not just to rejoice that God has spoken, but you need now to take actions. Praise the Lord. So, and we see from Deuteronomy chapter 1, and verse 8, that's the one I'm specifically interested in. See, I have set the land before you. Go in and possess the land which the Lord sowed to your fathers, to Abraham, to Isaac, and Jacob, to give to them and their descendants after them. This is the instruction that God gave. This is the instruction that God gave to Moses. Mo uh, God gave to Moses, and Moses gave to the children of Israel. When you start from verse 1, he says, these are the words Moses spoke to all Israel across the Jordan in the wilderness, in the Arabah opposite Sur, between Param and Tophel, Lebanon, Azeroth, and Diza. So, because God has spoken, because God has promised, there are actions you need to take. For example, God, as I'm counting myself, God, we had the breakthrough prayers we had for marriage. God promised that there will be, we'll, we'll have at least three weddings. They're in the pipe. Praise the Lord. There are three weddings in the pipe. Now, sister has to agree, brother has to agree. <laughs> are we together? Brother has to make the step forward. And approach the sister. Are we together? But if you stand that God has promised and you do not do anything, you will not get it. And this is what we're talking about. Not because God has promised that you have to sit down and fold your hands. There are things you need to do. There are things you're expected. Now, the interesting part, you know, as God was saying, you go into that land and possess. God did not tell them that you will find a wall. When they got to Jericho, there was a wall, a big one. He did not tell them that as you go there, you'll find the wall. But I've already given you. That's all he said. I've already given you. Are we together? Mark 5, 35. On the same day, 
When evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over the other side. This is our Lord Jesus Christ. And this is from the passage where the Jesus finished preaching on this side. He instructed his disciples, we are going to cross on the other side. And as they were crossing, they encountered a storm. Praise the Lord. They encountered a storm. But the word of God has already gone forward. And when you follow that story and the encounter with Jesus Christ, you know, Jesus asked them, why is it that you have of little faith? Praise the Lord. Why is it that you have of little faith? Why did, I asked myself, why did Jesus say that? For one main reason, he had already said, let's meet on the other side. So they had to believe that whether with this storm or not, we will make it on the other side. Praise the Lord. We will make it on the other side. Whether there's storm or not, we will make it on the other side. But when the storm raged so bad, their faith changed. They went to find master who was sleeping. He, you do not care that we, sh we, we should die. We should perish. So they lost faith. So, God has promised victory. Finance may be a situation you are facing. And God tells you, start something. Instead of starting, you begin to count. What do I have? In order for me to start. Start. Praise the Lord. You just start, you will get it. And this morning, as I was just going through my notes, there's this testimony that, uh, you know, when I started this project, someone called my wife. I said, oh, God, I said that uh, you will get what you, you are looking for. But when I started that project, I was not seeing how Things will go. But I started anyway. Then as we went along, I started now putting my application and everything for the project. The thing was just too much work. And every time, you know, I would remember what that person, that person, we never consulted them. Oh. They just called on their, their own thing. Ah, oh God, I said regarding that thing. Oh, nah, what thing are they talking about? So each time I felt like, you know what, I'm just too busy. Let me relax on this thing. Then I'll remember the word. Then I'm like, okay, so God has prepared. Let me just continue. The long story, to cut the long story short, eventually the project got approved. But when I started the project, I was not even seeing. In fact, I didn't count myself as one qualified to write the project. That was my first issue. I didn't even see myself qualified to write that project. So it's something you are writing you are on YouTube. You are also learning how to write, how to do. So I just put it like that. But eventually it got approved. So because the victory, God has already spoken. You have to believe and act on that. One thing you can see from here is that for every victory, you are to encounter, you have situations around you that will discourage you. You have situations around you that will explain to you why not. You always have situations that will explain to you why it makes sense not to engage yourself into that for what you want. This, for the story, the story we just read, we see that the Israelites, they encountered the wall of Jericho. That war was a very huge war. People had houses in that war. People could walk on that war. So it, it's large. And it represented some resistance. It was a difficulty they encountered. But despite that, they still believed God that there is a way. Praise the Lord. With God, there's always a way. 
The other hindrance the wall represented, that wall was kind of standing in the way of the will of God. Praise the Lord. That is why it's good to be in the will of God. Because when you're in the will of God, whenever a situation arises, that situation is not challenging you, it's challenging God. When you are in the will of God and the situation arises, it is not challenging you, it's challenging God. And we know that God knows no defeat. He always wins. At the end, you always be praised. You always be glorified. Very, very important. To be in the will of God. To be in the will of God. And that war, as it stood, it gave more confidence to the people of Jericho that these people will not win, will not enter. It gave them confidence. So as you engage in this life, in this 2022, as you walk in the will of God, you should not shake when you find situations that arises or things that arises to tell you why this will not work for you. It's part of the package. But you have to see that this thing is challenging the word of God. It's not challenging me. It's not my business. Just ask for God's help to intervene. Praise the Lord. So, and we see that there are a few things, like in the first passage, uh, by the verse, first verse. Now Jericho was securely shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out. None came in. With the people of Jericho inside, they were defiant. They shut the door. And they knew once we shut the door, you, there's nothing you can do. This thing is impregnable. You cannot penetrate. At times, you have an opportunity. It's the Holy Spirit leading you in that way. But the first few encounters you have, they're challenging you. They're telling you why it will not work. And the number one is probably your mind. Your mind will begin to think of why. what are the many reasons why you should not start this thing. But meanwhile, the leading is coming from your spirit. The leading is coming from your spirit, from the spirit. Number two, these are some, those are some of the challenges when you're about to get the victory. Now, the victory requires, it demands certain things from us. And we get that from verse two. And the Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's king and the mighty man of valor. The Lord said to Joshua, see, I have given Jericho into your hands. It's king and the mighty man of valor. Number one thing that demands you need to be aware of is the source of your, of your victory. What's the source of your victory? Who is the source of your victory? Where would your victory come from? It's God that spoke. I have given Jericho into your hand. It's God has given you 2022. It's not the uh, devil that has allowed you to enter into 2022. It's God that has allowed you. Praise the Lord. It's God that has allowed you to be here. It's God that has allowed you to be in school. It is God. He has given you. So he is the source. Praise the Lord. He is the source. I remember some, a while back speaking with someone that could not pay their school fees. Then I said, you know what? Just thank God. Why? Because you need to learn that your source is God. And you are learning it 
very early in life that much later on is going to help you very, very much. You are learning now to fully depend on him. The ones that are still waiting for daddy and mommy to send money, you are way ahead of them. Because what you now, you, what you are forced now to begin to think, they don't think about it. They don't consider it. So don't see yourself as disadvantaged. It's hard. It's painful. This now. But there's something great that God is going to deposit in you. You are going to learn. Him is your source. And depends on him. God is your source. You see, one day I was um, connected to one of these teachings of, uh, I don't know, Pastor or Brother Billy. What's the last name? Billy, no, no, Billy Okoni. He has some teachings on Bible study. Billy, thank you. Billy Akoni, thank you. You know, he has some Bible studies uh, that he, he's a great teacher. So he said something that really challenged me. He said, your work is not your source. God is your source. And God is using that work to provide. But he is your source. Do you know that majority of us, if you are to sit on that, very well. We don't see it like that way. We see as our work, our source. They call you, whenever they call you, you go because that is where I get money from. Not God. You even cancel your meeting with God because you want to answer work. God is your source. You want to Possess your possession. You want to walk into victory. You want to receive that which God has made available for you to enter into it. Understand is your source. Is your source of strength. Is your source of energy. Is your source of wisdom. Is your source of understanding. Is your source of everything. Is your source of provision. He is your source. He is your source. He is your source. I pray that the Holy Spirit will expand that in our heart because it's just so deep to see God as your source. What it means is if your employer would come and threaten you, you will be able, to, and God says, no, this is the position you need. This is the position. And you are convinced about it. You'll be able to tell him, you know what, go with your job. God will provide for me. He is my source. That kind of faith is a great is a great kind of faith. You know, it is that kind of faith that you know. There's this testimony that um, uh, that Dijo gave about uh, Park and the I can Oh my God! This morning, Pa <laughs> Akindayomi, thank you. So, he said there was a time they didn't have much food. And then he asked his wife that, don't look into the pot. Just be dishing out. And they did for days. But curiosity was too much. <laughs> One day she went and opened the pot. The pot was empty. That's the kind of faith. The kind of faith that the widow was told, go borrow vessels. Close your house and be pouring. Some of uh, you, you know, some of us, what we'll do, we'll look at the oil is this much in a, this size of a bottle. And I say, ah, maybe I can get five. After all, it's not much. Maybe what I'll do, you know, I'll just pour this little in those five. And somehow God will find his own way of filling them. But that was not the instruction. That was not the instruction. May God give us that kind of faith. 
May God change our mindsets to really truly see him as the source, our source, the source of life. The scope of victory. In this passage, you also see the scope of victory. God say, I've given you Jericho. I've given you the king of Jericho and the mighty man of valor. There is a scope of victory. Which is very, very, very important. Because at times, what God has in store for us is this much. But you only <laughs> satisfy yourself with a small one. Praise the Lord. May God give us understanding. And the other item that we see here, part of the demand, you need to understand, see God as your source, understand the scope in which you are going into, and the assurance, the assurance of victory. Why are you, why are you sure that you will conquer? Why are you sure that you will have that thing that you want? Why are you sure? The assurance. And this assurance is from who is speaking? God. Your confidence and assurance should come from the fact that it is God speaking. Are we together? Your assurance needs to come from God. Needs to be in God. God has said it. It is done. Praise the Lord. God has said it. It is done. Why? He's a creator of all things. He can bring it. He can create it. Just bring it into existence. It will done, be done. He can get somebody to come and do it. He has limitless possibilities. Who has said it? Just to give us one example about who. For example, if I stand and go on, on YouTube, on, on, on TV, I say, oh, yeah, um, I'm lifting... Uh, 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 the lockdown. People will just laugh at me. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But when the prime, uh, the premier, and the chief health officer come, and they say, "Okay, we are lifting it on Monday," everyone will rejoice. I will know that it has been lifted. Who is speaking? Praise the Lord. Who is speaking? Who has given you the word? And you know, he says, the Lord said unto Joshua, say it. John uh, 16, 33, Jesus says, these things are spoken to you that in me you may have peace. In the world you have tribulation, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. You can stand on it. Cause of Christ. Who is speaking? Who is speaking? Victory. Part of the demand of victory. It's a call to action. In order for you to enter into victory, there is a call for action. You need to act. Verse 3. You shall march around the city all men of war, you shall go all round the city once. This shall do six days. Call to action. If you want to win in one particular area of life, there is action that needs to be taken. There's something you need to do. There's a call to action. Call to action. Now, under call to action, you need to be courageous. You need to have courage. You need to have faith. 
what God was asking them to do, it's something that did not make sense. Military-wise, it did not make sense. How can we just go walk around the city? It did not make sense. It just did not make sense. But you need to have faith in the divine instructions that you receive. In what God has said. If God has said, just believe it and do it. First Timothy 6, 12. Fight the good fight of faith. Take hold of the eternal life to which you were called when you made your good confession in the presence of many witnesses. Fight the good fight of faith. Fight the good fight of faith. You have to stand on what you believe in. Praise the Lord. You have to stand on what you believe. If God say you are healed, believe it. You are healed. It doesn't matter how you feel in your flesh. Are we together? It doesn't matter. If God says, I will visit you. In this year, you'll be married. Stand on it. Stand on it. Don't, don't now take the action of God is this one. God is that one. God is that one. <laughs> you know, is, is this one? Is that one? You just stand on it and believe that God will do it. Just stand on it and believe that God will do it. And consider that case I settled. Praise the Lord. So we see they had courage of faith. They were given instruction to go and march around the city. They had courage of faith. Number two, we see that part of this call of action is obedience. They had to obey. Obedience. The God asked them to do that for six days. Six days. And this is hard because God sometimes, God's instructions, the way God thinks is not the way we think. The way God do, does his things is not the way we do our things. Isaiah, the Bible says, for my thoughts, Isaiah 55 verse 8, for my thoughts are not your thoughts, no, my, your ways, my ways, says the Lord. Verse 9. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your, than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. Not everything that God asks us to do will make sense to us. Not everything he asks us to do will make sense. The way he sees is not the way we see. The way he does is not the same way we do. Very, very different. So, Part of the call of call to action, they had to be courageous, they had to have faith, and they needed to be obedient to the divine instruction, to what God has asked them to do. Naaman in the Jordan River, when you look at the story in Second Kings five, uh, Second Kings chapter five, you see Naaman. What is it? I, I like him, man. You know, when I read that story again, I kind of like, I, said, I, I told myself, I, I really like this guy. Probably in, uh, you know, he went there in that country. He went to see the king. Then the king eventually sent him to the prophet. Now, when he got to the prophet, he had a lot of expectations. A lot of expectations. Verse 10, 2 King 5, verse 10. And Elijah sent a messenger to him saying, go and wash in the Jordan seven times and your flesh shall be restored to you and you shall be clean. Verse 11. But Naaman became furious and went away and said, indeed, I said to myself, he will surely come out to me and stand and call on the name of the Lord his God and have his hand over the, over the place and wave his hand over the place, all over the place. And heal leprosy. That is man's expectation. We want to see drama. Praise the Lord. That is man's expectation. We want to see drama. 
We want to see people falling down. We want, you know, we want to see people jumping. Then we know our, our God was there. But if someone is speaking slowly, nicely, ah, there's no power here. But when they scream and shake, they say, ah, no, 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 no. That must be the Holy Spirit speaking. <laughs> Praise the Lord. You know? God does not work like that. It is his word. It doesn't matter how it comes. But as long as it's in the Bible, it is his word. Stand on it. Don't look for extras. Don't rely on feelings. The devil can also make you feel like that. Oh, when the wind blows, the devil can also blow wind. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Ah, he can also make wind blow now. Oh, I feel my hair do this. Ah, the devil can also do it. Praise God. But rely on the Spirit of God. And the Spirit of God ministers to your spirit. That's why you want to connect with him. His spirit ministers to your spirit. He testifies in you. There's this passage in Romans 8. Um, don't remember. Verse, is it 16 or verse 6? Where it says this, with the spirit witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. Romans verse 6. No, no, verse 8. Romans verse 8. So, the Spirit witnesses, the Spirit of God witnesses with our spirit that we are children of God. Sixteen. Six sixteen. Yeah. Eight. Eight sixteen, yeah. Yeah. The spirit himself testified together with our spirit that we are children of God. That's what you need to rely on. The spirit of God testifying within your spirit. That's what you need to rely on. Not on anything that is external that is too dramatic. But we thank God for Naaman. Naaman obeyed and received his healing. And so shall be your case in the name of Jesus. Discipline. Discipline. When you, are act to, when you move into action, discipline is required. When we go to verse 10. Now Joshua had commanded the people saying, You shall not shout. Or make any noise with your voice. Nor shall the word proceed out of your mouth. Until the day I say to you, shout. Then you shall shout. Do you know how difficult it is to spend the whole day working with someone beside you and not talk to them? <laughs> it is hard. Even your enemy, after some time, you want to talk to them. Even after some time, you want to talk to them. Discipline. What did God exactly say? Do not add, do not subtract. Because that war fell, I know they all obeyed. They were disciplined enough. And that walk is not a five-minute walk. If you consider a city that you have to go around, probably it took them the entire day. Because each day they had to go around once. Probably it took them the entire day. Just walking and not talking. They will start talking again when they, they enter their camp. May God give us this discipline in the name of Jesus. May God help us. Patience. Patience. You need to be patient 
when you engage in the process of your victory. For six days, there was no sign. For six days, there was no indication of what is going to take place. For six days, they felt as if they were just wasting their time. There was no result. For six days. Patience. Patience. Patience is very, very important. And you know what the devil does? It's during that time where you are waiting and you are waiting patiently. That devil will come and begin to poke. Are you sure? Do you see any result? Is this thing really working? It is not working. And they will poke. And poke. And poke. But patience pays. Praise the Lord. Patience pays. It doesn't matter the situation you are going through. Ah. There will be a turnaround. But you need to be patient. You need to stick with God. You cannot, you see, the thing, the thing the way God does it is He said for seven days. If on the fifth day they had to break it, he would have reset the whole thing. Do it again for seven days. So be patient. The moment you begin to feel like anxiety is beginning to kind of move in, no, you are close to your victory. But remain patient. Patience is a virtue. May God give us patience in the name of Jesus. Patience is very, very, very important. It doesn't matter how the situation is looking like. But you need to be patient with God. You see, what breaks my heart a lot of time is <coughs> someone who give their life to Christ. And we promise that, you know, God will turn around your life. But they expect to turn around the following day. They do not understand there's a process. Praise the Lord. So be patient with God. The word of God. David says, since I was young, now that I am old, I have not seen the righteous beg for bread. Or for second. I have not seen. That's the promise. Is in the word of God. It is in the word of God. So patience. Because some, some battles, they will just take this long. Some will take a day. Some will take months. Some will take years. Depending on how, the, how big is the price that is waiting for you. But at the end of it, you'll be victorious. At the, end, at the end of it, you will testify. You need to be patient. I heard a story about someone that was working, I think a general, MD, managing director. But because he's following Christ, not doing any corruption, nothing, the guy had nothing. As a manager, he had nothing. He was poor. Because he did not take what did not belong to him. He did not overcharge. He didn't do any of what everybody else is doing. And it was like that. God knows for how long. 14, 15 years. Same situation. But eventually God said, okay, now you can leave. Go some, sell something. Within a year. Within a year. The way his business boomed was just clearly that that was the end of God. But he had to, to pass through the, the 14 years of building his character, 
of building himself up. So when he begins to see the millions, they will not shake him. And when you see him, you will not believe that the guy is that rich. It's so simple. So down to earth. You will not believe. So patience is just so needed for us. Patience is important. We want to enjoy things that are meant for us to enjoy. Later on, you are still in school. You are carrying boyfriend. You are carrying girlfriend. For what? <laughs> and committing sin together. And you know, the truth is this. Even after you've done that, the time you enter into marriage, you are bored. There's nothing more for you to discover. You begin to look outside. Patience pays. And when you enter in that one, you are entering in by yourself. When devil will begin to deal with you. <laughs> but when you wait for the Lord, the right time, it to be added to blessings. Patience. Patience pays. Don't help God. Don't try. When sometimes the, the enemy try, what pushes us to want to help God. Don't try to help God, but be patient. They will mock you, yes. Some people will mock you. Some people will say, ah, see this one. You are so dumb. Everyone else is doing the same thing and like getting and like enjoying. But you have chosen a different route. You have chosen to follow God. The ways of God are not the ways of man. And the way God sees victory is not the same way that man sees victory. Praise the Lord. Patience. Patience is important. Isaiah 30, 18. I think I need to close here. Therefore, the Lord will, uh, therefore, the Lord will wait that he may be gracious to you, and therefore he will be exalted, that he may have mercy on you. For the Lord is a God of justice. Blessed are all those who wait for him. Blessed are those who wait for him. As you wait for God, patiently, As you follow his directions with discipline, the Lord is just watching, looking for the right time for him to move in on your behalf. Shall we just bow our heads and just begin to speak to God? Let us just pray and speak to God. Just speak to him. We're talking about victory, our stories from the sto from Joshua 6, the wall of Jericho. And we see how they needed to be courageous, how they needed to have faith, how they had to be obedient to the divine instructions, how they needed to be disciplined, how they had to be patient. Just go ahead and speak to him. The victory is yours, that which God has laid upon your heart. Indeed, the Lord will do it. Indeed, you will enter into your possession. You will possess your possession. You will move forward by asking to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you change the way we think so that we can see God as our only source. He is our only source. In success in academics is our only source. Success in marriage is our only source. Success in our career is our only source. Every area of life. Family is our only source. Go ahead and speak to him. Just speak to him. Just speak to him. Ask him to help you. Ask him to help you.
Ask him to change the way we see things, uh, the way we think. His thoughts are not our thoughts. Ask him to help you. Father, your thoughts are not my thoughts. The way you see is not the way I see. Help me to see the way you see, O oh Lord. Help me, O oh Lord, to think the way you think. Help me, Father, to appreciate things the way you appreciate. Lord, I ask that you help me. Just go ahead and speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to him. Speak to him.